Hey everybody, welcome back to Swahili Nation, Swahili to the world. How are you guys doing? Let me know in the comment section where are you joining from. And as you can see in the comment section, guys, this is not just about me, but this is One Africa Forum. This is me, you, and everybody. As long as you're African, this is for you. And you might not be an African. This is for you too. Hi everybody, I see Smart in Amharic. You say, hi, Mika, stolen history and manuscript of Africa. Mm, that's pretty interesting topic. Yasen Tabaraki, hi, hi, it's good to see you. Guys, if you're joining right now, please let me know where you're watching from. I wanna shout out to your countries before I go ahead and begin this live stream today. I'm not gonna be here for a long time today. Guys, it's gonna be very quick. But also you guys will have uh, an opportunity to come and to share, which is very important because it, it's about Africa, right? And we're talking about Africa. Hi from Ethiopia, Rita. Hey, it's good to see you. Appreciate to have you back. I think I've seen you a couple of times already. Um, Smart and Amharic, you Swahili Nation family right there. I've been seeing you here a lot. El Ella Smile, it's good to see you too all the way from Ethiopia. But oh, we have people joining, guys. Um, if you're joining right now, please, you can take a link and share with your friends and let them know that, you know what? The One Africa is happening right now. We're about to have a discussion, we're about to have a conversation. And as you all know that the tagline for One Africa is a conversation for a better tomorrow. We wanna have a better Africa. We wanna have a better tomorrow, especially in our continent. And here is the place where we meet and we discuss and trying to find out how can we have that? How can we achieve that? Because the sec of Africa is in our hands. And maybe in your country, you're having amazing time. You're having good time. You don't have any kind of, any sort of problems. And maybe you don't see the necessity and you don't see the importance of having unity in Africa. Maybe Maybe you are living just a normal life. Maybe you don't have any issue. You don't have any trouble going on. And you might not be able to see the necessity of that, right? But if you're, you're, if you're in the middle of the, um, if you're in the midst of the crisis, if you're going through something right now in your country and it's costing people's life and it's costing innocent lives, then you understand the necessity and the importance of unity. Because you wish, because this is the question you can ask yourself, that everything that is happening right now, what will happen if we are united? What will happen if we are united? So you can think about that. And you can think about how many things we are losing because we are divided. And what will happen if we are united? What would unity mean to Africa? You can think about that. What would unity mean to my country? It's very important to think about that. And again, I gotta be very straightforward that when I'm talking about unity in Africa, I'm not talking about assimilation. I'm not talking about letting go of your identity. I'm not talking about um, disannounce your citizenship. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about simply embracing the differences we have and realizing that uh, whether you're from Kenya, you're from Uganda, you're from Somalia, you're from Ethiopia, you're from South Africa, you're from Ghana, you're from Morocco, you're from Tunisia, you're from Egypt, you're from Ghana, you're from Togo, you're from whatever country is it. 
Zambia, you know, even outside of Africa, but it's knowing that we are one, no? you know, we are coming from different backgrounds. Everything is different. We might not be related by blood, by skin color, by our hair, by our tongue, the language and all those kind of things. We might be different, but that doesn't mean that we cannot be one. We cannot be united because we want to see how can we change the situation? How can we resolve issues and conflicts that we encounter? And when you look at the conflicts happening in Africa, most of them, they are caused by the division, by tribalism, ethnicism, you know, religions, people thinking that, you know, mine is better than yours. If I am Christian, thinking that, you know, my Christian religion is better than yours simply because you're not a Christian. Those are the kind of things that are bringing us um, into the place where we are right now, that we cannot live in harmony and peace between two different people. We must be the same to live in peace. That doesn't make sense. That is going against uh, what God created because God, he created us differently. We are not the same. We are completely different and we need to embrace that because that is the beauty. Africa is one of the most diverse continent in the world. In fact, it is the first one, all kind of colors, all kind of people. In Africa, there's not only black people, there are brown people, there are white people, there are Asian people, there are all kind of people here in Africa. That's the diversity we have in Africa. And we have to know and we have to embrace that. And how can we do that? Realizing on when, when we know that your brother and your sisters, when you, when you know that people who they look different from you, they're actually your brother. And even in the, in the country level, in, in the same country, you know, we see a lot of issues going on. And that's why we're having this conversation. Can we join you, bro? Can we have the link? There will, there will come a time and you will join. There will come a time I will share the link in the comment section for you guys to come and to share your opinion. Well done, my brother. You make us Tanzanians proud. Well done, Tanzania to the world. Yes, man. Um, we are here. I appreciate that. I appreciate love from Tanzania. You know, it's very rare to see love from Tanzania here, but it's amazing to see someone from Tanzania. And, you know, yes. So let me just put some, some taglines here that we have been talking about because today is day 10, guys. Can you imagine it's day 10? The matter of fact is episode 10 today. We are having this time for Africa Unite. And let me say this, guys. I want to applaud Ethiopia. I want to applaud you guys because you guys have been in the front line really speaking about this. Even guests that I've been having often, it has been Ethiopian. And I realized, I was thinking, like, why it seems like there's so much need for unity in Ethiopia. Why a lot of Ethiopians are crying for this? Then I realized that when you have a lot of things to lose, like uh, when you lose enough, when you lose enough and you don't want to lose no more and you realize why all these things are happening, that's when you are crying. That's why you are asking for that. And it should have been something that we are crying for. It shouldn't be something that Mika must be doing that right now because all of us are supposed to just come together and be, and be, you know what? We won. And we have to stay right there. And we have to hold our hands and to be together. Talk about the spelled UN workers from Ethiopia. You should be the voice for each other. That because I, I, I saw the article and, I, and, you know, and I'm so proud of everything that's going on and we'll definitely come and talk about it. Uh, but today I wanna focus more on, you know, on, on this issue of Africa because I don't wanna leave other, other people behind. I don't wanna leave other people behind. I don't wanna leave other countries behind. I don't wanna do that. But this, I saw, I saw the article and I think I'm gonna need to go through it um, you know, again and again to, to get a full picture, but it's something to be proud of. It's something to be, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll talk about that, but I, 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 you know, I need some time to talk about it. Yeah. So guys, um, you know, before I move on, I want to share with you guys uh, one video here that we're going to listen uh, a little bit and maybe we'll continue to build our conversation 
you know, based on that as well. Okay, let's listen to this video a little bit. This is one episode in uh, in Swahil Nation called Africa's Finest. We want an Africa, as you said, where there is equality of gender, equality of opportunity, um, promise of a good, healthy life, promise of an educated society, promise of a leadership that thinks more about service than being You guys served. see that? We want all of that. Borders to, 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 to be removed and so on. Why don't we have it? My answer is very clear. Because you have a selfish leadership. Extremely selfish. We often think, we often think of the problem of leadership as being the problem of the leaders alone. Fine. They must be defined, have integrity, have all those we want. But to succeed, they must be able to implant those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political intellection. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Equality? Or is it diversity? How do you convert diversity wow. into strength rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting? Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish. We are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. Oh, I got to I gotta go back there. Now, we listen have, to this. You know, listen to this. Okay. But to succeed, they must be able to implant those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political interaction. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Mm -hmm. Equality? Or is it diversity? How do you Quality convert it. diversity into strength rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting? Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish. We are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. We have... You know, it's ironical that you have a, a continent with the best natural resources of any others as of today. But they are being exploited for the sustenance of those who enslaved us and continue exploiting us rather than being exploited for our own emancipation. <laughs> Why? Because you have a leadership that does not recognize the degree of present-day present enslavement, economic enslavement and the necessity for, uh, for, for, for emancipation. It's ironical. We, we talk about development, but we don't stop in time to define what development in our kind of situation is. One of the greatest reasons of admiration for this country, for instance, is the fact that you have here a universal system of health and education delivery. Now that is development. Rwanda is more developed than any of these Western countries regard, where you have assured health and education. So we really might think where we are, why we are what we are, what we can be, and how we can. I agree, women, youth, and all those things. They did not see their brutal things. Thank you. Guys, I will definitely play this video uh, again later. But um, I think most of you, you have listened to this. By the way, this is uh, Benjamin William Kappa, um, the uh, third president of Tanzania. He used to be a third president of Tanzania. He died, by the way, last year, um, RIP. Um, he's, he's talking about diversity, and then he's talking about equality. 
And he's talking about what is our priority? He says, yes, we are blaming leaders and a lot of things that I've done, but whatever ideology they have, whatever plans they have, they should reflect into the society. So we have a leadership that is selfish, just focusing on now and right now and the seat I am in and what I'm doing right now, but I'm not, I'm not focusing on the future, on the future generations. The, the, the previous uh, live stream, we've we spoken about having the goal for the nation, having the goal for Africa, making those vision for Africa, instead of just, if, if I come into leadership and, and I'm just thinking about right now and right now, why, what do I want to do? But I'm not thinking about, okay, after I leave the office, the, the next person who's going to take, what are they going to do? We don't think about that. So he's talking about those kind of issues and what is priority for us. I say, yes, we, we, we have like ethnic groups in Africa. But that should not be the source of conflict. We should always remind ourselves that we need equality in our society. And when I'm talking about equality, forget about the equality of human rights, the way you're talking about. Forget about that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 my perspective of equality. That's what I'm talking about. Equality that every single one of us, we are equal. It doesn't matter in your country. If your ethnicity, it has a huge number of people and another ethnicity, it has just a short number of people. It doesn't matter about that. It doesn't matter the amount of number you have. It doesn't matter the amount of people you have. Even in your country, it doesn't matter the population you have. Because some people, they're scared of it, uh, to be united with other nations because their country is small. So if I am, let's say, for instance, I'm said, for instance, if I'm Rwanda and then I want to be united with Tanzania to be one, I feel like I'm going to be swallowed because Tanzania is a big country and my country is small and Rwanda is a small country. But when we think about equality, we are thinking about, you know what? It doesn't matter the size of your country. It doesn't matter the size of my country. It doesn't matter how much power you have. It doesn't matter how much power I don't have. It doesn't matter about all of those things. What matters is that we are equal. You're African. I'm African. You're alive, I'm alive. I deserve to live, you deserve to live. It doesn't matter in my country. Like the leader of my country is from this tribe. And so the other tribe is left behind. It's like, you know what? I feel like, you know, we're not really equal because I feel like the president or this leader is actually we're talking about favoritism. is favoring this group of people because it's coming from this tribalism. Those are kind of equality I'm talking about. That it doesn't matter what is your tribe and it doesn't matter how much strength or weakness you do have in your tribe, but what matters is we have diversity, but we also have to focus on equality. Equality in our society. You don't have to think yourself higher, like higher than anybody else. Yeah, you can think. You have to understand that you are as important as I am. Your tribe is as important as I am, and that's why, as my tribe, and that's why we are talking about one Africa. That's why we're talking about that. One Africa is basically saying that, you know what, we are, we are equal. Yes, we might be coming from different backgrounds, but you know what, you and me, you deserve to live. I deserve to live. Your kids deserve to live, deserve to get good education, deserve to live a better life, a safe life. You deserve to have peace. You deserve to have love. You deserve to have a decent life, and I deserve to have that. That's basically what we are talking about, One Africa. We are not talking about segregation. We're not talking about classes. We should not have that. Yes, always in the society, you have people with a lot of money. You have people with a lot of influence because of whatever it is. But even if you have a big influence, huge influence, it doesn't mean that you're better than other people who don't have that influence you have. It doesn't mean that you are, you're much better than those people that they don't have that platform. Okay, I have this platform of Swahili Nation. It doesn't mean that I'm better than you guys, that you don't have the same platform as I do. Because you guys are pursuing your passion. I am pursuing my passion. And this is just a platform of, to unite all of us. It's knowing my strength, recognize your strength, and knowing that I cannot survive without you guys being there. Imagine if I have this YouTube channel, I have this One Africa Forum, and then I don't have anybody that is watching there. I don't have anyone that is supporting. I don't have anyone that is commenting. I don't have any. Anyone that is coming on the live stream and share their opinion, imagine, what am I going to achieve? That just shows that we depend on one another. And we have to understand that, that we depend on one another. We have to be there for one another. We have to be united. Ubuntu, yes, Ezra. That's the Ubuntu spirit right there. 
We rely on one another. We, we have to be with one another. Equality, equality and diversity. I think this will be a big, a, a good topic to talk about, you know, because we're always talking about diversity, of course, it's very important. But I think we should, we should, we never spoken about equality, like just the word itself, equality. Equality versus diversity or diversity versus equality. I think that's what I'm going to write here um, as the title. Well, let me write here right now, guys. And soon, guys, I'll be allowing you guys to come on the live stream and to share your opinion. I see Ezra is right here. Cannot wait to hear you, man. It's been a while. And other people right here. Yeah. Equality versus diversity. This is, it's always, it's always, it's always a, it's always a fight in Africa. Like you'll hear some people, really mature people talking about, you know what, my, my tribe, we have a lot of people here in this country. We are the leading, we are better than you guys. What the heck are you talking about? Get out of here. Who cares about your tribe and what kind of number you have? Nobody cares about that. Do you think God cares about that? He don't care about that. It doesn't matter how big or how small your tribe is. You're all human being. There's nothing special about you that another. Of course, you have something special, but they have something special as well. Hmm? That's what I'm saying. You can, it's 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 okay to see you to look like to be proud of yourself. It's okay to be proud of your country. It's okay to be proud of your tribe. It's okay. But when you look down on other people and think that you are better than them, that's not okay. Feel feel good about yourself, but don't look down on somebody else. That's where we get all these issues, get all these problems. Do you think I was, do you think I asked God to be born in Tanzania or in Africa or in the tribe that I'm coming from? You guys, you don't even know my tribe because I never talk about it. Do you think I asked God, I was like, you know, let me be born there. No, I was just assigned here for some specific mission. The same thing to you guys. So knowing that is knowing that you, 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 I, I don't have any right to look down on any country or, or any person out there. I don't have that right because we are all created uniquely and we all have important job to do. And when we realize that and join our hands together, then things are not going to be the same. Yes, I love the boat. The boat. This is the first time to see the boat. Guys, I'm going to share the link in the comment section and i see a lot of people here today joining so you guys you can come and share your opinion all right um i'm gonna share this link right now and just remember that uh, some people they might want to come and share as well so when you're coming and joining here uh yeah let's give each other's chance all right guys so i just share the link in the comment section i want to welcome some people we're going to be talking about equality versus diversity we, we want to talk about that we want to talk to somebody out there who is think that he's he's better than anybody else you know everybody he's like you 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 have to know that you are important in the eyes of god you are in, you are very important no matter where you're coming from no matter what is your background no matter your poor or rich no matter what which tribe you're coming from you are important you have to know that you have to know that you know that i'm telling you um then you're not gonna anyways we have african here african it's good to Hello. have you man do you mind to introduce yourself and where are you calling from uh i'm ethiopian i'm calling from uh us okay how and, is the uh, us this is my second time to call to you yeah, I remember. I remember the name African. Yes. How are you? Yeah. Man, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Africa is beautiful. The weather good. is amazing here. The food is good. And it's good to talk to be talking about one Africa again. Good. That's good. Uh, and uh, all your ideas very uh, uh, encourage people to the come together. It is a good mm -hmm. spirit you have. Uh, thank you for that. And you have, a, you have a positive attitude. Mm. But uh, I don't want, may, may I'm wrong. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to just, just my opening, what I am observing is uh, mm. more than Ethiopian media, more than Ethiopian YouTubers. I always follow mm. the African, like West African YouTubers. Exactly. And, uh, just the general, all other Africans, which is uh, they have mm. 
on English one. I don't, I don't, because I am trying to improve my English also. I want to know about other African, uh, exactly. what's exactly going on, uh, which is which countries, what beautiful stuff. And then, mm. as I mentioned last time, since uh, it, it has been four years, uh, continually uh, genocide on the Amara tribe. And mm. when they discuss about Africa, because mm. the person like me, we don't access big media. We use only uh, like this YouTube stuff. And the mm. only thing that people have to investigate or uh, have to know is that information wrong or uh, fake. Otherwise, mm. they have to acknowledge and uh, also have to be, if it is true, genocide is the last very, uh, you know, it is like when people say Rwanda genocide, it is mm. very scary thing. Genocide is not easy thing. But most yeah. of uh, my African brothers, they talk about Africa, how we can be united, blah, blah. But when I told them, I go to any mm. group, please be voice on social media. This is, this is happened. Just mm. two, three people react. Even they don't care. Some people, even mm. they don't want to discuss about that. I don't know mm. why. So that uh, it is questioning me to my brain. Oh, mm. if we are united, we have to uh facing the problem too not the only the peacefully transition thing if this kind of thing come they have to mm. oh let's check out this thing if it is true this is not good we are supposed to be be a voice they people don't try this mm. all four years i go to on youtube uh, live like yeah. this i talk to them this is this is happen uh mm. but even they don't want especially on youtube they don't want that kind of thing is talking on that so mm. what what is your comment about this about what specifically specifically when if a people is on social media platform mm. that's talking about african united uh, i mean uh, yeah. about african africanism yes. mm. if some country genocide happen mm. is mm. that can be voice for that thing or someone has told uh, them is that yeah. a problem to be a voice no, this is not being on uh, just to be human okay yeah. just you so people don't do that or mm. don't don't even discuss about this thing of course this in ethiopian too some of ethiopians they mm. talk about ethiopianism but when genocide happening they are on the side of the government mm. uh this is not only other yeah. How we can solve this problem? We don't. We are not honest. Uh, that's what I am seeing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think a lot of people. I I understand your point, and I think a lot of people they they they're really trying to be careful with this issue because it's it's very sensitive issue. And whatever at this point, for example, even here in Translation, we do it. Whatever you're gonna say, you're gonna either hurt somebody or break some people's heart. And I think a lot of people, they are trying to be very careful because it's something that it's ongoing on. And it's about people's life. Like people are uh, actually, you know, you know, uh, losing their lives. And so when it comes to speak about it, people are being very, very careful how to raise that point. Even talking about me myself, I'm being very careful how, you know, I can raise my voice about that because um, it's it's hard to raise a voice if you don't fully understand uh, things like in detail what's going on. And that's why uh, for me personally, or my message, I will always talk about, you know, it's not right for people to die. It's not right for people to lose their lives. It's not something that we can entertain. It's not something that we can um, we can agree with. It's something that we can always, um, you know, speak against it that, you know what, I think... Uh, we have to take care of our lives and we have to take care of uh, the lives of people as well. It's something that I can say, but going in detail of the situation and issues, how they're happening, how they go, it's, I think a lot of people, they're trying to be very careful about it. And, and even right now, for example, the topic that we are talking about today is equality versus diversity. These are, like, are the reasons of so many issues that we are facing. So instead of just attacking the they instead of just looking at the results of what is happening it's good for us if you want to have a sustainable a change a change that will last for a long time then we it's better for us to go to the roots of problem 
And so here in Soil Nation, when, when, when you're trying to look at the roots of the problem, we see that the roots of the problem is that the, the, there is no equality mindset in our, in, in our mind. We think that, I think that I am better than you. I think that just because I have this and this, I think that I deserve this better than you. So that kind of mindset is what is leading us to uh, a lot of issues that we are facing every single day. And we are trying to go through that to remind people that you know what? Equality, 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 equality for all. You're important, I'm important, they're important. That's why we're trying to do that, Mr. Africa. Africa. Yes, exactly. You're right. That is to uh, uh, bring a peaceful place in Africa and to be everybody equalist. This is a process what are you guys, what are you guys doing? But uh, mm -hmm. if it is actively genocide, if that is true, people, if you not stop because uh, people is uh, on a social media and a Twitter, uh, yeah. like have to fight this kind of thing is because this is urgent. Just already people is dying. How we can mm -hmm. ignore this to work into future process? That's why, mm. because this is just already people is on dying. But what are we mm. doing is a process that for future. Uh, mm. And uh, yeah, this is uh, my my English is not really good. Thank you uh, for your no, time. No worries. <laughs> yeah, African, Bye. I really appreciate, man. It's so good to hear you. Uh, we have Thank Ezra you. too in the panel. Ezra, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I just want to add a little bit to what uh, our brother uh, by the name African has said. I think mm -hmm. it is important that we we take all of them. I think there's a saying in America, you can chew and walk. You, you can chew mm -hmm. a gum and walk. I think yeah. like part of the issue is we have to confront the issues mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, genocide. And mm -hmm. I think genocide is the ultimate that is the, yeah. by definition is the elimination of one tribe and effort mm -hmm. to eliminate one tribe but sometimes yeah. they don't even go that far they don't go that mm -hmm. far of you know completely eliminating the, the the totality of an ethnic group or a tribe or, mm -hmm. uh, or a group of people that identify themselves based on race religion mm -hmm. faith uh, gender all of these issues and sometimes mm -hmm. the crimes are even not that far but they are crimes nevertheless. Mm -hmm. So what we have to be, is like he said, we have to confront them. At yes. the same time, talk about it. I think you, you address the issue in a very, very subtle way, but a very important way, which is that the issue, the, the, by raising equality, we are raising mm -hmm. the consciousness of people that, that mm -hmm. says, you know what, we should not define people based on their race. Hence, mm -hmm. Nobody should be exterminated because they are Amhara or Tigri or Romo yeah. or Swahili speakers, you know, or, you know, Bantus or, mm. uh, you know, this region or that region. I think that is the thing that we have to stand up for. And then, you know, in, in, so by addressing equality, we are also addressing the issue of these issues exactly. that we are also confronting. We could do all of them all at the same time. I don't think yeah, one yeah. should wait for, for another. You know, exactly. we should do this first or that first. We should do all of them mm -hmm. all together. And if we have over a billion people in Africa, we should mm -hmm. be able to do a billion things at the same time. And mm -hmm. equality allows us to be able to address these issues and bring them to the mm -hmm. forefront. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to just comment on that. But the other thing that I wanted to say, a few things that I wanted to say. One, mm -hmm. I want to say how beautiful Tanzania is. I mean, oh, I, mean I consider That's myself, <laughs> yeah, I mm. consider myself, you know, very critical, not accepting media perception of Africa or any region yes. for that matter. But, mm. but by looking at, when I saw your video, I saw how flawed mm. my assumptions are. Mm. Mm. Subconscious bias, you know, not yeah. conscious bias, but mm. unconscious bias yeah. is the thing that sometimes prevents us from understanding each other. Mm, mm, and so we are mm. subconsciously, and we are unaware, I, am a, I was unaware of my prejudice against Tanzania yeah. until you showed the video. Of course, I'm impressed yeah. with the visual and the wow. image. And of course, I'm also aware that mm. that's not all the picture of Tanzania. I mean, like all African countries, mm, like exactly. all regions, yeah. even when I live in San Francisco, mm. 
on a daily basis, what I witness is the hundreds and thousands of homeless people, of people with drug uh, drug issues, you know, you know, uh, drug abuse issues, yeah. people with sexual abuse issues, people who have criminal crim- criminal background and have not found a way yeah. back to the society. Everywhere you go, there's that reality. So, is, I mean, so is in Ethiopia, so is in Tanzania. But th- that said. Yes. What the visual image that you showed was like mm. it was an attack on a, my subconscious level of my, mm. you know, my subconscious bias that I had to work as that. And thank you for that. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You know, these are the things that clarify. But it doesn't mean I'm going to say, oh, Tanzania doesn't have poor people. It doesn't mean Tanzania yeah. doesn't have challenges. Yeah. Mm. I can accommodate exactly. the thoughts of yeah. your challenges along with the true mm. pictures mm. that you bring to it. and i was saying in the comments mm. that you know tb mm. airlines mm. is known for promoting a number of these mm. african youtubers that are traveling around i say you know tb Airlines should be giving you free rides around africa and promoting africa i think like if you have to make the request go ahead and make the request and it, so, mm. so I, well, like we don't get to see africa the way we would like to see and anytime somebody shows it, mm-hmm. I love it. I had this this Ghanaian yeah. uh, yeah. YouTuber that yeah. I've seen that showed Somalia, and I have no idea how that really, mm-hmm. really uh, resolved my issues. And I've, I, I sometimes I even yes. follow yes. YouTubers that are like speaking different languages, but the image is mm-hmm. is powerful enough for me to understand what they're trying yeah. to do. <laughs> so there's a lot of these things that are going on. I want to say I want to encourage that. But I think on the issue of equality, the, the last point yes. I want to make on the issue of equality is, mm. is that it comes from what? Where does it come from? It comes from the sense of humanity. Mm. Mm. And I think yes. that sense of humanity should be the driving force of the world order. And I think mm. if there's anybody that is supposed to educate the world, about humanity mm. is Africa. Despite yes. our economic, social, political, and historical, mm. you know, challenges, Africa mm. is still the place where, you know, a small minority of group of people can sustain mm. their traditions, their culture, and their mode of and way of life mm. uh, in, in ways no other continent has allowed it. I think that is, speaks to the underlying humanity that governs Africa, but that hasn't found the platform at the highest level. Now we are elevating it. In this conversation, we are elevating that, what is traditional, what is cultural to Africa, to mm. to the dialogue at this stage, to yeah. the stage that yeah. you have established, to the stage many Africans mm. are trying to establish. We are elevating that. I mean, the Morsi tribe is one of the famous Ethiopian tribes. Small, yeah. tiny minority group of people. And then many of us think that we are civilized because we're wearing clothes, we live in this modern life. But, yeah. but and, and empathizing with their star, style and their life and their conditions and, their, and the way they understand and live with their environments, now we're beginning to see uh, lessons that we can use in the way we live today, okay, lessons that could be inform our attitude to the climate, mm. to our environment, to our ecosystem. And the Mursi tribe mm. is, is not mm. just, it's, they're not just rejecting modern modernism, they're rejecting all the pain, mm. pain and suffering modern, modernization has, brings to the world and to our planet. And by protecting mm. the environment, mm. by Putting together, it was putting on the ground system of ways of methods of protecting the ecosystem. We are learning that that is the way the world should be now. And I'm yeah. giving credit to their culture, to their tradition, not because I want to tolerate, because now I'm falling in love with them. Yeah, it, it might be difficult for me to reverse to their way of style as a way of accepting, but. Yeah. But my attitude and my way of thinking and how I think about my trees, the trees around me, the ecosystem, the birds, the air, the people in it, the humanity, the resources, the ma- all of it is now being reshaped by this view that Africans have of their environment.
and I, yeah. I wanted to share that here uh, as part of the equality element that we are saying that everything is equal, all is equal. Yeah. It is up to humanity to stand up for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's 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 so that's that's really amazing. That's really amazing, and I don't know why people they, I think the people they're really struggling with equality, um, you know, b because of how the world is defining equality, you know, and yes. how so many organizations define equality. In Africa, we have our own way of seeing those things. And yes. me personally, I believe that, like, literally, when I'm, I'm talking about equality here, I'm simply saying that, and I already mentioned that, but I'm just saying this for the sake of those people who are joining, I'm simply saying that you matter as much as I matter. Like, you deserve to live as much as I deserve to live. I am not more important than you. You are not more important than me. Yes, you have your weak, you have your uniqueness, and I do have my uniqueness. I have things I can do. You have things you can do, and we have things that we can do together as well. It's simply me saying that that I I know all of us who have been created uniquely, and we might not be the same, but we have to understand and to know that we are equal in the eyes of God, and we have to see ourselves as well. That you know what you and me we don't have any difference even though i'm living maybe there or in abroad i'm living i'm doing this and that we are equal and i think this 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 is what can really solve a lot of issues that we are going through yeah. and a lot of people they struggle with this concept because they're going back to the concept of uh religions and how religion talks about this that okay when you're talking about this this and this is it's like that and that but what what I'm basically saying, which is everywhere, and if you, for for the sake of other people, really, that you, we are equal. We are really equal. I mean, you are speaking the fact. You are saying the fact. The difference mm. is accepting the fact. And we are yes. equal, uh, mm. whether you believe in God or not, mm. whether mm. you yeah. follow a certain religion or another religion or not. Exactly. We are equal. It's, it's a given. It's a fact. Mm. And and when it comes down, mm. what do people want? Uh, what do people really, truly, deeply? What are people mm. truly, deeply motivated by? Mm. We realize mm. the simple human concerns, mm. and those things always bring us all together. Whether you are. Mm of this color or that color, of this race yeah. or that race. And mm. to me, another thing that people sometimes is that linear thinking. Like mm. really like, for, for, you know, our mind likes mm. to think simply. And we follow that simple mm. thought and then really get into a, that trap, entrapment. Mm. I find that to be an entrapment. I yeah. am an Egyptian. Mm. I'm an African. Mm. I'm a man. Mm. I'm educated. Yes. Uh, I'm a son. I'm mm. a brother. Mm. Um, I speak this language. I mm. and I'm all of them, all at the same time. I don't choose one today and choose mm. another the next day. In one mm. day I'm Oromo, the next day I'm Ethiopian, mm. the following day I'm African, the next day mm. I'm a medical doctor, or the following day I'm like a son. I'm all of them, yeah. all at the same yeah, time. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's the power of our Creator is mm, to mm. help us be all and one, mm. all at the same time. It's an incredible yes. power that we, mm. we bring to, to, the, to, to the universe, which is the ability mm. to really put all these divergent things and make sense of it in our mind, in our hearts, in our soul. Mm. And that, to me, so yes, it is equality versus diversity, but it's also yeah. equality and diversity. Exactly, and I think that's the, so. Uh, so uh, we have so we so what we are doing here right now. We are tackling on this false mm. narrative, and false notions yeah, of yeah. where, yeah, I'm not one, and then yeah. not the other. I'm yeah. one and others, and all yes. one this unity. That sense of I unity that. that resides in me is the sense of yeah. unity I want to reside in my community. Yes. Yes, it doesn't mean all is perfect and smooth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, means yeah. Mm. it means that it takes time to weave in those yeah. unity. It, mm. it takes effort, mm. initiative. Mm. And so, like, you know, for me to be at peace with the fact mm. that I have a religion, 
mm. and a faith that mm. is in conflict with the kind of education that I have had. Yeah. Okay. That is the, mm. the process of resolving diversity. Mm. I, I mm. have to find a way to win to weave my education with my faith. Mm. Mm. So, so I'm very passionate. I love mm. studying astrophysics, astronomy, even though it's not my field of study. There's a lot mm. of science to it, and sometimes it makes you want to to set, object to the notion of God. Reading, mm. studying that, mm. but at the same time, it is my challenge to figure out a way. How does my faith help me be at peace with that mm. incredible knowledge and understanding of the 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 veracity and the power of God? And the way God has created this huge and massive universe that is that is so hard to comprehend in the human mind. So how do I weave in that? So that my challenge is to figure out how do I find my the beauty of being an Ethiopian and an African. And in that challenge, we have to go through it as a human beings and figure out and resolve the conflict and tension that, that, that resides within us. Once you resolve that tension within you, then it becomes so easy and it becomes a cakewalk. When you see somebody who's completely different from you, you, you begin to see, ah, oh, okay, I, I want to learn this so that yeah. so I can see the other dimension of me I don't see. So through you, through Mika, I see myself. Mm. You're completely different from me. But I see yeah. myself. How does exactly. that happen? Because I found a way to resolve the tension between the differences. Yeah. And I see so the beauty good. in it. And that to me is, I know it's a little bit philosophical, and some people might find it philosophical, but in mm. practice, it's very simple. It's yeah, just be, it is. be a human being and mm. go through the resolution of it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. You remind me of one thing that we, we, we need to learn how to see good in people. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll meet people and then if you don't know where they're coming from, you don't know their tribe, you might be really kind to them. But once you ask them, where are you from? I remember, I don't know if you were the one who said that, shared about, um, like, Haile Selassie. I don't know if you were the one who shared that, you know, since somebody was like, you killed my father, right? Oh, yeah, I, I told you that. Yes, exactly. in Ghana. So, in Ghana, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are, you the son of, are you the son of the guy? Because my middle name is yeah. Mangusti. It's like the yeah, Ghanaian. Yeah. It's like, are you the son of... Oh, and then it was serious. It wasn't a joke. Are you the yeah. son of the, the man who killed my uncle? Mm. And I'm like, mm. like, I yeah. listen, listen to your uncle? Yeah. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but, so, but it's, yeah, so go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it, it reminds me... Uh, like we need to learn how to see good in people because you, you cannot just uh, judge people or hate people because of their tribes, because of where yeah. they're coming from and yeah. because of the mistakes that were done in the past or they've been even done right now. You cannot yes. just generalize and just hate people because of that. You need We need to give each other's chance and we have to yeah. see, to try to see good in people because yes. what I hate about you I might love even more be after getting to know you because maybe yes. you have a lot to love than, you know, to hate. And th th that's why even when you're pointing about, you know, Tanzania, th th this I'm not just going to do for Tanzania. It's, it's my dream to go to actually all the countries in Africa. And I actually try, I, I already sent the email to Ethiopian Airlines. It, it has to be like maybe one week ago or two weeks ago, but it got, it got sent back because I, I guess there were so many emails. So it didn't go through. I'm going to need to try it again. But the reason why it's because I want to show the side B of the coin. You have yes. a coin that has side one, side A, and side B. The whole yeah. world knows about Africa, how poor it is, crimes, all those negative things about Africa. And that is side A. For me, I'll call it even side B sometimes. But there's a whole, a lot about Africa, side B, that the world, it doesn't get to talk about. For instance, yeah. take an example of all these NGOs and the videos they're making about fundraising. The only image you see there, it's dirty image. It's really bad yes. image that if you are walking around the street and then you see those advertisements on the big screen, you're, you're, you're trying to hide yourself because you feel like everybody's watching that, oh, these are those people who are suffering and going through those kind of things. All these are side, it's one side of the coin, but there's a whole another side of the coin that people, they don't get to see, they don't get to share. And I think that side, we as Africans, we're gonna, we, we have to t tell the story and we have to share about that. And that's why I'm doing this, um, this, this kind of series of, you know, Africa, they, I mean, Africa, they, 
Africa they don't tell you about or the side of Africa they don't tell you about. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think like, you know, just to add a little bit to that, I mean, yeah. you know, perception, I, so mm-hmm. I remember studying marketing. I remember yes. the marketing professor says, you know, what is the most important thing when he started the class? What is the most important thing in marketing? What is the most important thing? And everybody said, oh, figuring out the price, figuring mm-hmm. out the promotion, figuring out this, I mean, the all part of marketing is like, oh, yeah, they are all those. And then at the end, the guy said, no, none of these are the most important thing. The most important is perception. Perception yeah. is what you're setting. Wow. And wow. it's so perception. So, so, you, so anytime somebody is focusing on one thing, mm-hmm. you have to ask the question, what is the thing that they want me to perceive? What mm-hmm. kind of perception they want to plant in my head? And so we know, like, we know based on our history, uh, based on our experience, that if you say a lie over and over and over and over again, it can be considered, it can be perceived to be truth. And if yeah. you say a truth and over and over again, the same thing. So, like, so the perception is what, uh, you know, most of the time. That, so when by focusing the, the lens, the lens on that, the, the side of A of the coin mm-hmm. by focusing mm-hmm. on that over time you begin to think that there's no other side to it except that yes. mm-hmm. and then uh, you can't help it as a human being but the only way to address it the only way to address mm-hmm. is by showing the other side yes. by not telling oh if I try to convince people oh you know somebody's trying to mess with your perception mm-hmm. it's not a sufficient enough uh, yeah. basis for somebody to change their perception by mm. by putting equally a substantially powerful enough set of perceptions that gives a pause to a, whoever is perceiving Africa the wrong way, you start to mm. realize, okay, okay, it might take a long time, but it does work. Yes. So your so your attempt is not mm. ignoring the pain and sufferings. Yes. Your attempt is like we cannot address the pain and suffering mm. of people by ignoring the thing that we yeah. are good at, that we are strong exactly. at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so by in order to address the inequities mm-hmm. and the, the imbalances and the challenges of tribalism mm-hmm. and all of that, you have to demonstrate to the world mm-hmm. that there is another side of Africa that has already resolved this problem. Yes, yes. Not just through tolerance, mm-hmm. through love mm-hmm. and compassion and yeah. unity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So by showing that, you're saying this is a way to do it. So there's another set yeah, of perception yeah. that you can that can help you figure out the mm-hmm. the tension that you you find yourself in when you are mm-hmm. you know only positioned in a way to only see the negative. I can break it down statistically. Mm-hmm. If you look at the amount of aid that is given mm-hmm. to Africa, it would mm-hmm. in yeah. any, any given year it does not account for more than. At most, more than two percent of the, the GDP of Africa, the total productive outputs of yeah. Africans in a given year will not amount to more than two percent of uh, the GDP. So you realize mm. most of our hungers, most of our economic mm. challenges, most of our social challenges are already that are impacted by the economy mm. are resolved by ninety-eight percent of our GDP. But the perception mm. that we are set. Uh, that those two, per- those mm. that two percent of support aid that you gave, it's like as if they mm. they are feeding fifty percent of of our outputs. Mm. That, like that, that this is how powerful perception is. You are per- you yes. perceive that you depend on aid so much. Without it, mm. you die. Yeah, and mm. that is not to say aid is not necessary. That is to yes. say aid mm. is this. This is the real estimate of the value of aid. Yeah. To our total economic endeavor in a given year, mm. hence we should give it that much two percent, mm. mm. not fifty percent, not ninety percent. Mm. That means by doing that, you are saying that the other ninety-eight percent of the economy that is produced by our farmers, our laborers, mm. our traders, that are you know you know traversing across many part of the, the, the continent walking carrying things in the back of their in their own back or the back of a donkey these are the economic endeavors of africans 
that are resolving access to food, that are resolving access to medicine, that are resolving access to education, access to a lot of these things. So, the, so, how, so by focusing on the other 98%, we're saying that, no, we need to make sure the African GDP is not just 2.3 trillion, it is 10 trillion. Mm -hmm. if, if, because if the GDP that we produce in a given year provides 98% of the support that we need for the country, for the continent, then it's, it's about time we redouble our efforts to make it more powerful, more dynamic, more empowering, so that we can resolve even more of our problems. So that's about perception, that's a power of perception sometimes. Mm -hmm. By helping yes. somebody see the broader picture, that is, mm -hmm. that is the fuller picture of the, the, the continent, you are saying to yourself, we have a 1.3 billion people, 70% of our population is young. That means it's a lot of energy that we haven't tapped into it. Mm -hmm. So how do, we, how do we empower them? How do we encourage them? How do we uh, resolve their challenges and difficulties of being a productive member of society becomes mm -hmm. the issue that we discuss on a regular basis. And then that, become, that resolves the issue of equality, that resolves the issue of you know, all of this. Anyways, uh, I've seen a lot, I think somebody is, is here. I think Kuru is here, right? So, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Hello, Professor drums. Kuru came today. Kuru, man, you show your face today. Can you show your face until the end? It's good to see you, Professor <laughs> Let me Kuru. try, I'm just, checking, uh, I'm just checking my mic, okay, let me try. Yeah. What up, what up, guys? <laughs> Rad Kuru, Professor. I'll, I'll show my face a little bit. Too. Sorry. No, hey, this, is good, yeah, this is good now. I feel like I'm communicating with someone right right now. Yeah. <laughs> I might be guys? talking to a robot without knowing, you know? A robot. <laughs> <laughs> we are real. We exist. <laughs> yeah. oh, yes, you're not talking today? You're not joking today? No, I'm not joking today. This is real. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> so how are you guys? Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. It's good yeah, to see yeah. you guys. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Today, I think you mentioned a very important point. So it's about mm. uh, equality, right? Mm. So mm. in my opinion, you know, I mean, last time I checked, is there any other race? Human beings are one race, right? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's one race. <laughs> Last time I checked, there is no race. So I think <laughs> yeah. our differences is uh, something that gives us mm, a compliment. It should be complementary, mm. right? For example, take mm. uh, a male and a female. Mm. How? I mean, totally different. Di they're different biologically, right? But mm. their differences is complementary, right? Mm. One complements mm. other. So mm. in that in that perspective in that pers uh, respect, uh, uh, perspective, the way you, mm. where, where you see is like everything is designed so that it mm. could complement each other. You get the mm. point? Mm. Mm. So it, what ha what what I lack, you have. Mm. What one lacks, the other one has. Mm. It's perfect. The way, when God yeah. designed everything, it's really perfect. It's, it's mm. complementary, right? Yeah. But the yeah. thing is that you mentioned you should just show us uh, a video, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't know where where it is. The, yeah, the guy mentioned right about now. one word. Yeah, the guy mentioned one mm. word. That's greed. Mm. Mm. Greed. Right. That's yeah. it. Selfishness, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Selfishness. You guys want to listen to this again? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's listen. Okay. I don't need it. Play. It is again. Africa, as you said, whether it's equality of gender, equality of opportunity, um, promise of a good, healthy life, promise of an educated society, promise of a leadership that thinks more about service than being served. We want all of that, borders to, 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 to be removed and so on. Why don't we have it? My answer is very clear. Because you have a selfish leadership. Extremely selfish. We often think, we often think of the problem of leadership as being the problem of the leader alone. Fine, they must be defined, have integrity, have all those we want. But to succeed, they must be able to implant 
those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political interaction. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Equality or is it diversity? How do you convert diversity into strength rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting. Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish. We are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. We have, you know, it's ironical that you have a, a continent with the best natural resources of any others as of today, but they are being exploited for the sustenance of those who enslaved us and continue exploiting us rather than being exploited for our own ends and emancipation. <laughs> Why? Because you have a leadership that does not recognize the degree of present day, uh, present day enslavement, economic enslavement, and the necessity for, uh, for, for, for emancipation. It's ironical. We, we talk about development, but we don't stop in time to define what development in our kind of situation is. One of the greatest reasons of admiration for this country, for instance, is the fact that you have here a universal system of health and education delivery. Now, that is development. Rwanda is more developed than any of these Western countries in this regard, where you have assured health and education delivery. So we really must rethink where we are, why we are what we are, what we can be, and how we can. I agree, women, youth, and all those things. But internally, the fault is in us, dear Brutus, not in our stars. Thank you. Yeah, well said, huh? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Selfishness, greed, all for me, huh? All, all, everything, all for me. So, I mean, that's just what I, that's just what I wanted to share, uh, Mika. Uh, uh, to me, like, uh, like, what, what, uh, where does that come from? Where does that greed come from? I think in our education, and the way we educate uh, our people is that you are being educated to figure out your own and all your only problem. Is, is I think that's part of the, the challenge that we, we have to resolve is that we, we, have, uh, we have to find a way to challenge those people who are smart, intelligent, and, and capable people to challenge them to really channel that intelligence to that sense of humanity that you want. I mean, some of the, I mean, that's, I'm telling you this based on my experience of an education, like in my school, we, we brought together the, some of the smartest people in Ethiopia, some of, the, some of the most intelligent people, highly performing, high achieving students. And we realized our challenge is not gonna be like challenging the students on the rigor of the academics, but our challenge is, we, was going to be challenging these growing young people, growing leaders, to really appreciate the complexity and the nuances of being a human being. And so, 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 to a degree, we were a little bit successful in that. You know, a lot of the students that have graduated from our school see a degree of responsibility and accountability for the kind of kind of uh, capability that they come with. That they were gifted with, so they are gifted uh, to understand complex and difficult academic challenges. But that gift must is a responsibility by itself, and so so our education yeah, is Ezra, not just. Ezra. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay, what if someone right from the from the start? What if someone uh, decided that uh, he's better than you? <laughs> programmed like from the get-go i think that's a very good question that's always a start like because <laughs> I, like I, because because of, like to me that i want like when i was educating these young people i actually want that person mm -hmm. we call it the shadow of 
who has shadow of leadership. When somebody yeah. is like that kind of pushy, like sense of oh, I'm better than you, I'm entitled. That's a yeah. That's a, somebody preconceived. You no, know, but that's somebody is actually out yeah. outing for you. Yeah, as an educator, you want that person to really out themselves like that to you, because I know the fact and the reality. Because the, 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 the reality is that you not what you are estimating yourself is an overestimation of yourself. That estimation is an overestimation. It's just a matter of facts. It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of experience for you to realize that's an overestimation. So, so yeah. once somebody is outing out themselves like that, the next thing I do is I will roll out long and strenuous efforts, and sometimes institutional, but sometimes very personal efforts on my yeah. part. So, as yeah. I was running the school, I would put in the systems and processes to 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 break those things out of your system. And then kind of chart a part that's more a, a true estimation of yourself. I'm an incredible person and in understanding complex mathematics, but that's not an indication of your your geniusness. Yeah, I, I'm true. genius that, enough to figure that's, out, that's... but not genius enough to figure out even more complex stuff. So what I do is that we would chart them into a path, an educational and an academic path that try to reinforce strong qualities of humanity and then de demystify this wrong sense of self through experience through interactions through a reflective process where so we call it uh, uh, a locally robust globally education system is what we, we used to do we use context mm -hmm. environments challenges so i remember one, i can give you an example he's one of my students he just moved into stanford to pursue his phd and uh, I'm not going to mention his name if he ever he hears this. He's not going to mind that I'm, I'm talking about him. But the first time, like, he came to me, what I remember, I think I just moved in and started the work. He wanted to show off, like, oh, I'm the smartest person. And, like, he, and he didn't know that he was trying to show off, but I sensed it that way. And, like, oh, we started this techno team, tech team club. We want the school to approve it. Uh, and then, and then, but the, well, yeah, but part of it was like it was more like oh, I want to be given some adulation, some kind of reverence for stepping into this, and I'm like, and I'm like, so what? I, I push back, I push back, and say, so what? So what? So so you start something like this. So what? What should be? So what is the what is the meaning of it? And then like, oh, we want to do this. We want to learn how to code. Okay, learn code. And then he came back to me and said, oh, we learn how to code five languages. You know, so what? So what? You've learned this. You've acquired this set of skills. So what is so so? Uh, should I be impressed and like bow down to you as the king of coding, or are you gonna do something about it? So we kept on. I kept on challenging him. For, so this person from this, he has a lot of reason to be arrogant. He grew to be more humble, more calmer, and more committed to not just his own craft, but to the responsibility that comes with being part of a community. And today, if you talk to him, you see he's still the smartest person that you can think about, but you won't notice it until he actually shows you that he's... So that kind of humility is part of the process of growing. So when somebody becomes greedy and shows off, especially when they're young, your automatic response should be like, that's a good sign. That is a shadow of leadership. Not leadership, but the shadow of that leadership. And so what I want them to do is that instead of believing the shadow, really coming up. Anyways, I, I think I'll explain at length about it, but I don't want to over-explain it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, it makes sense. It makes sense. It totally makes sense. But my, my, my question is, if someone has a preconceived idea that he's better than you, Without even knowing nothing about you, that he's, for example, he might say like, "I am the, we are the God chosen race, right? We are the Ariel race, right?" <laughs> if he says something like that, and then then he say like, "Okay, so I am chosen by the gods to rule over you, to make um, to make you a slave, to make you my servant. So everything you had is for me. What would you do in this kind of situations?" The, the, the thinking, you see? 
That's what we have to fight. The thinking. The no, but, but that, that's that's what, 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 I mean is, what I mean is like huh? what I mean is that you have to fight it by by debunking the wrong reality that they are in. They are delusional. Somebody who is like that is delusional. So that's, how do you exactly. how do you address delusion? Is by informing the other side of the brain, the other side of the mind, the other side of so every so. You know, uh, and one of my idol as an educator, one of my idols is uh, uh, a name, a Brazilian named um, Paulo Freire, and he wrote a book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, one of the most phenomenal books. And I say it is like a manifesto that any education educator must follow, which is he talks about what's called an education that humanizes. No, so he mm-hmm. he comes with that by from the notion that. Our education system since the industrial revolution has been dehumanizing edu- people so that they become tools and instruments of things. So they become pushers in the factories, what you call a banking model. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's 150 page was packed with a lot of incredible uh, uh, stuff. But yeah. what I can t- tell you is that he talks about education as a practice, not as a. Th- Israel, Israel. I think we lost him, right? Uh, call Are coming. You? Can yeah. you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. I had a call come in, so I got interrupted. No, so now. he talks about education. So he called the practice, the practice. So mm-hmm. he said the way to humanize, the way to humanize a person is mm-hmm. by implementing an education that intentionally puts it as a practice, as a regular yeah. daily initiative that is reflective. So on a daily basis, as you meet and interact with learners, make them, make the initiative, make the everything. And so if I'm teaching you, if I'm teaching you sales and biology, I don't want to, I don't want to just pass on a content. I want to use the education of, like, you know, the education that is designed to give you understanding of cells or tissues in biology. means. Mm. Mm. Think, yes. I think yeah. Mika, so, can you hear me? So yeah. I'm using so I'm using that content not just to pass on content but as a tool of humanization. So by being intentional about the process, so you begin you begin to think about like hey, so how do I humanize somebody through the education of biology? Mm-hmm. That and then that becomes so so when my teachers or my educators when I'm looking at my lesson their lesson plans I have mm. our, there's content objectives, but there's also high order learning objectives, and these high order le- learning objectives are critical thinking, reasoning, sense of self, appreciation of your yourself and your community. Mm. So you build those things into it, and you demystify it. And through it takes time. It, ta- mm. it takes very. It's a small thing to make somebody greedy. It takes a lot of effort mm. to take them out of that. But the process is yeah. demystific- demystification and debunking and deconstruction of that. And that is the work. And then, but, so that, Israel, from that ask, work, ask, those sorry. people who are pushing for African unity, those people are resu- uh, pushing for equality, they cannot shy away from that. I mean, Paulo Freire says this. He says, the only person who can liberate the oppressed and the oppressor is the oppressed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And there's a lot of explanation behind it. So by so, we the oppressed, first and foremost, have to humanize ourselves, have to de- deconstruct all the perception, all the biases that have been planted on us through an education system we just willingly accepted, and begin to think those the education that I've acquired, the skills I've acquired, are part of the truth, but not all of the truth. So how do I fill up all these other truths that I don't have access to? It's through critical reasoning, through sense. So humanity allows you, being human being allows you to navigate all this stuff that I know cannot be simply lectured to you in a classroom. And so dialogue like today, discussion like today, they do that job. I don't know if, you know, I know it's not that simple to uh, like really take in because I'm not battling somebody who's resisting an idea i'm battling you know historical kind of uh, uh, historical composition 
uh, mm. that are that shape our perceptions and skew our perceptions. I have a very close mm. friend of mine, a colleague of mine that I mentored. He's he just finishing up his PhD in, in Washington State. His work is how do I teach mathematics in a culturally, contextually sensitive way? So in the state of Washington, he just told me the other day that his proposal to reshape the education of mathematics, to take mm. into account Mathem the way mathematics was understood in Native Americans, the way like maths, numbers, and and then all the learnings of mathematics are appreciated in the con in the epistemology of African American communities, black communities, minorities, and brown, and in all these communities. Now, his work is now shaped, reshaping the curriculum of the state of Washington here in in uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, I, you wouldn't expect how do I how does mass become part of the colonization until you actually study and like he has studied you won't realize that it exists now his work mm -hmm. is helping to recalibrate the education of math and science in a way that's culturally sensitive culture when we say culturally sensitive we mean like the global context that is usually mm -hmm. ignored in the education system I, I, mm -hmm. I hope that helps in a way, I'm not I wanna, trying to convince yeah, you or uh, reshape your perception. Uh, but I, I'm trying to find a way to help you see perspectives that are out there that could be helpful mm -hmm. to your notion that's which is serious. I want us. I want us to draw back to uh, the topic that we are. You know, uh, Mika, not Mika, you are muted. Yeah. I think I, I can't hear you. I don't know you if you can hear. Kuru, can you hear me? Yeah, so the so, sir. So, it's, uh, now I can hear you now. I think. Yeah, yeah. There's a I, I said, there's I a said, connection. There is a connection problem. No? Yeah, I was I was out for some time. Like all of a sudden, I was just yeah, going yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I was like, what's 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 going on? I'm no longer there. Um, <laughs> and then when I came, I realized that it's a different topic. You're talking about education. Uh, can we draw back yeah. to? <laughs> can we draw back? <laughs> okay, it's good to it's great to have you, Korean. <laughs> and Ezra, I think he's gone. Um, I, I want us to draw back to the topic that we are talking about because um, I think this is very important. We'll definitely come equality. back to talk about education, equality, and diversity. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like all these things that we are talking about, if like it, it has to lead us to you know where we are trying to talk about today. Mm. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, yeah. in my in my opinion, right? So, before education, like before the mm. the modern education, uh, people lived for so many years together, mm. right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, like education can contribute to to some extent, but are like mm -hmm. are there some doctors up there, uh, some professors? I'm not mentioning me, right? Uh, just mm -hmm. saying uh, that mm -hmm. are uh, very ignorant. Mm. you know and still mm. racist and uh, mm. they think that uh they're better than other people mm. are they not those people in our society right mm. so that's just uh mm. my opinion is it's not it's not only it's not because of your education because you can be educated and be ignorant at the same time you know mm. be that's education true. means like yeah when, when we talk about it, um, equality and stuff like that that's an inherent Characteristic mm. of a human being, right? Mm. Like love. Like what? Okay, so every race, right? What do we have? What, mm. what do we have? We have. Mm. Uh, what do we need? Okay, those, no, no, not what we have. What, what, what do we need? We need uh, mm. a good living, right? We need food, right? Mm. We need shelter, mm. right? We need medication, right? Mm. We need education, mm. right? These are the basic common mm. things that everybody in the world wants, right? So mm. today I might speak English, right? And today tomorrow. Mm. I might speak uh, Swahili, for example, right? And mm -hmm. if I speak Swahili, that's just the language. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be a race. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a Swahili, uh, like a Tanzanian or whatever, right? A Kenyan or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So just mm -hmm. language based on, like, seeing people in, in, in based on language and based on mm -hmm. race. I, I think there is only one mm -hmm. race that is a human being, right? But they're mm -hmm. different types mm -hmm. of human being, right? Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. by itself, like, Thinking about race by itself, that is uh, mm. you're very corrupt. Okay, mm. so you have a very corrupt mm. mind. That's like mm. that. That's totally wrong. 
from the from the mm -hmm. from the start. Like thinking about race, that means you're mm -hmm. making yourself like this big, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this big. So, mm -hmm. hey, if you start thinking about race, and then you mm -hmm. you lost the game, you lost the game. Mm -hmm. That's just that, that's that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So people. What do you want? Do you want something to say? Oh, I wanted to say, like, I just wanted to add to this, like, you know, it is a construct. Mm. It's a social construct. We, so, social by the nature of social construct, we chose this. We chose a world where we chose to have a world as human beings that that promotes inequality, that promotes, uh, you know, such notions such inhuman mm. and uh, inhuman notions that are not necessarily inherent to our humanity. I mean, of course, they didn't come out of nowhere. Prejudice didn't come out of nowhere. It's human nature to have prejudice. But I have prejudice all the time. We want to have implicit and explicit biases yeah. all the time. But where did that uh, come from? Where does that come from? It's, in, it's human nature. It's, it's part of human nature. No, no, it's part of human so. nature. No, 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 let me just break it down for you. It's human nature to have prejudice, okay? But racism is a construct built on top of that prejudice. So it didn't come out of nowhere. Racism is a... No, 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 racism is a construct. It's a construct. It is a construct. Prejudice, yes, that I agree. prejudice, you you don't know the things that you're not biased until you experience it. Prejudice comes from, from, from ignorance, don't you think? No, yeah, ignorance is part of human. You don't know everything. <laughs> Do you know everything? Yeah. So, you know, I think, no, no. Is, you know? uh, of course, of course I don't that know. That is me. So then there's a blood. We, we, we all know, we don't know everything. But it's because exactly. of the right? That is so, well, what I'm saying to you, you're, 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 what, what you're saying is that because of the instinct of survival, right? To, to survive, so you have to defend yourself. So that's why you become prejudiced. Isn't that what you're trying to say? No, no. What I'm saying to you, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying to you is that, you know, prejudice is a form of ignorance, right? It comes from ignorance. Ignorance, mm -hmm. you break it down, is not knowing anything. It's built not mm -hmm. ignorance is not built on knowledge. It comes from fear. It, uh, no, ignorance doesn't come from knowledge of something. It comes from it's not fear. knowing something. Yeah, but so that's fear, fear is part of that. Fear is part of that. But what I'm telling you is that, like, what societies have done over the past millennia, from the day Adam left Garden of Eden, is that we've we've constructed all sort of ways of, like, so we've it's like planting weeds. We planted the weeds of suffering, racism, subjugation, oppression, slavery. We built on them. So it's built on basic human nature. So the difference so between... That's... No, no, no. Let, let me give you this. The difference is that I know I'm not, I don't know everything. I know I have prejudice. As soon as Mika released the video of Tanzania, because I have, I have a sense of uh, an understanding of my flaws and my weakness as a human being. As soon as he released a new set of data that I didn't have it before, my s ignorance started fading away, and started getting filled by knowledge, knowledge of something new. As you are speaking to me, you are eradicating some of my ignorance, some of my lack of knowledge. I'm, as I'm speaking to you, I'm also doing the same thing to you. So what I'm trying to use that like uh, ignorance you can't eradicate prejudice you can't eradicate but racism you can't eradicate because we built racism based on that weakness in our humanity. So it's like I this is how I teach uh, my students a pencil for writing is the, By the, way, there's the two because okay. <laughs> One is this frozen Mika. <laughs> so, so, so what I, I teach you about, what is the strength of a pencil? The strength of a pencil, the strength of a pencil depends on what you're trying to use it for. The strength of a pencil, when you're trying to write with it, the strength of the pencil is not the eraser side. It's a simple 
I know it's a simple, a very simplistic analogy, but it's, it helps explain how things, like how you can use something for weakness and how you can use. So the strength of a pencil for writing is the sharp side, and the strength of a pencil for erasing is the eraser side. This, the weakness of the pencil for poking somebody's eye is the sharp side. So, so it's all about like how do we utilize our humanity? So, by first you have to humanize first. Being human means acknowledging and uh, and being comfortable not just with what you're good, strong, and passionate about, but recognizing th that you are a compilation of all of them, including your weakness, strengths, your flaws, your knowledge, your ignorance, and your understanding, all of them. So once you are human. So what you do is that, like, once you are humanized, what you do is that, like, how do I construct a society that reflects humanity? And that is the choice that human beings have to make. So over the past 400, 500 years, you've seen a, a move away from the society built on weakness, exploitations, more toward justice, more toward... So, so you, you, you see, you see so, so we no longer have slavery that we used to have. If you were to listen from the, pers <laughs> from the, from the perspective of the slaveholders, if you read, I've read a lot of books on that, the perspective of the slaveholder, the, the perspective of the slaveholder is justified. You go away thinking this is the right thing they're doing to civilize a very uncivilized society. If you, take, if you wear their hats, there's a lot of justification for it. Makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> but, but, but because it's built on a very flawed sense of mm. humanity, mm. a flawed sense of humanity, then mm. it doesn't have a lasting effect. It, of course, it lasted 400 years in this country. It lasted thousands of years in the world. But today, we still have slavery in the world. And we still have a different forms of slavery in the world. But but we can deconstruct it and reconstruct a world order that is reflective of this humanity. No humanity in the sense of strength only, but the sense of, okay, we know we have flaws, so we have to watch out for that. So we put in laws, regulations, and education systems that make sure we check on those weaknesses. That's what I mean. So that's what I mean, the, the distinction between uh, humanity, like being, being a human being and being weak, and then, the, and then a humanity that recognizes a weakness and builds something to complement the weakness or to strengthen the, weak, the strength. So that's uh, the issue I'm raising here. I know it's a little bit, sometimes sounds disjointed and doesn't make sense sometimes, but, but <laughs> it might let's, make sense. Let's, let, let's wrap this up. I, I, think, I think everything yes. that is being said is very, is, is, I mean, it's very important. And I, I see other people in the comment, they are wondering like, why are you guys out of the topic? But I think uh, what is happening is you're trying to build, you know, the points. All these things could, be, I mean, it's, it's the meat to the main topic that yes. we are talking about. And we should always draw uh, people back to, to what we are talking about, and that is equality and diversity. So do you guys have maybe your, you know, your final words to share, and then we're going to wrap this thing up? No, yeah, what I, I would just, say, um, okay, you, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So I would say, what I would say is that like, by, in order to really address he, mm -hmm. equality, we have to come from the sense of humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you know, Kuru said earlier, we, there's only one race, the human race. Mm -hmm. And I think if you come down to that level of humility, and then we build on top of that all the infrastructure, all the tools, all the instruments mm -hmm. that recognizes the equality we're looking for. So, so like today, I'm not an Oromo. I mean, I probably mm -hmm. have a Romo background. I don't know about, but but like, but I love Recha. The Recha celebration mm -hmm. it matters to me. It's important to me. And as somebody who is a human being, this is if it is important for my friend, for my brother, for my sister, from the across over there, then it's important to me. So that then I'm in my mind, I'm building the infrastructure necessary. Not just only to tolerate something that I don't understand and I don't appreciate or I don't know, but also to appreciate and value what is important to for you 
for Kuru, was important for Mika, was important for everybody. So, so first start from humanity, and then recognize it takes effort and initiative and work to construct the world that reflect that. And that's that is the work that we do here. Okay, good. I just want to Thank point you, out Israel. that I just want to point out for everybody else that is watching right now that God has built us beautifully, wonderfully. Everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. one of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's put ourselves in the other man's shoes or in other woman's mm -hmm. shoes, right? We mm -hmm. bleed the same. We tear the mm -hmm. same, right? We make, mm -hmm. uh, we want the same things, right? We uh, earn this, we yearn the same things, right? So mm -hmm. let's put ourselves in the other, let's sympathize with other people. Let's put ourselves in their shoes and try to see things from their side, right? Not only from our mm -hmm. side, but from their side also. And in only in that way, then we can like communicate, right? We can have uh, a common understanding, a common vision, and a common whatever. So if we mm -hmm. if we put ourselves in that in that situation, that we will see that our needs are the same as theirs. We will mm -hmm. we, we basically need basically we, we need basic things, right? That mm -hmm. makes us all common, right? So let's focus on that. And other than that, let's uh, respect our differences. Let's respect our uh, diversity, right? And uh, I will respect you. You respect me, right? In that way, we can continue mm -hmm. as a society. That yes. way, we can prosper. In that way, we can make a change and we can make a difference. If not, mm -hmm. then if I'm sitting this side, if you're sitting that side, and then you say, like, I'm this and you're that, then... Nothing will, nothing will get done and nothing will change, right? We always have this uh, uh, loop. We we'll always be in this loop, and then uh, that is, that is something the, that not not going, not going to benefit anybody else. So that's just my final words. And uh, yeah. it's good to see you, Isra, my man. <laughs> see you guys. Finally, put right. the gentlemen. And, uh, Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mika. Right. I love you guys. Do. I love you guys okay. so much. All right. Yeah. Ciao, ciao, okay. ciao. Appreciate ciao, it. Ciao, guys. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Those man, those are gentlemen right there. My brothers. It's 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 amazing. And I'm sorry, guys, today I was having I think I was having network problem. But luckily, I like I'm connected in two different devices. So Right now it's live right here, but also I have another live right here. So every time that I was having trouble with this, I was just trying to transfer here and there. So I, I got to be honest, I missed a lot of conversation that was going on uh, because I was struggling with that. But all in all, it's very important and so beautiful that, um, you know, I appreciate Ezra and Kuru, uh, Professor Kuru for coming today and joining and share the opinion and, and, and guys, I think you shouldn't really focus on, you know, uh, why it's going like this, it's going like that, because uh, all these elements, if let's say if you're joining just at the middle, then you're not really going to get a full picture. But if you join from the beginning, then you will understand that it has been, we have been building, you know, to where it is right now. The topic is equality and diversity. And all these things, I think, are, all these elements are very important. We are trying to see how can we uh, have equality, how can we have accept um, equality and diversity in our uh, in our in our communities, and I think um, what, what 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 Ezra said that when we're talking about equality, the first thing that we have to think about is humanity. All right, humanity that you matter, I matter, we all matter. And then uh, what Kuru said, it's it's very important that we have to be in each other's shoes, right? Think about the other person. Think about uh, in in Korea we say yokchisaji. Yokchisaji is like. You have to think like me. Think about me. Think about my position I am in. And I, I have to think about your position you are in. You know, we don't have to entertain hate. We don't have to entertain um, segregation. But we have to embrace unity and equality, knowing that uh, your brother and, your, uh, and knowing that someone who looks different from you, speak different from you, he's your actual brother and your sister, and they deserve to live as much as you do. You know, you... That's the reason why you're still alive, because the only person who can take life is God. And I cannot take your life. You cannot take mine. Even if you kill me today, you're not really taking my life because I'm going to live for eternity. You know what I'm saying? So you cannot really take my life. And I cannot really take your life. Only one person can take it. And knowing that 
and realizing that and then you know that you know you you, you reach the point of understanding that you know you you don't have to do anything something like that you have to think about uh, the other person and you have to know that um, you have to be in their shoes. So this is both ways, the offended side and offensive side, all right? All these things we have to think about, all these things we have to um, daily be concerned about. It's, it's very important. It's very important. It's very important because, uh, you know, your African brother is not your enemy and your African sisters, uh, they're not your enemy. Uh, the different tribe from you, they're not your enemy, but they're your brothers, and we have to embrace that. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate for stopping by. This has been um, a long conversation today, um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. If you join at the middle, please go and check it out, uh, what we have been talking about, and I think it's going to be really, really helpful. Um, so before before I sign out, because some of you all might be joining right now as well, so before I sign out, I'm going to uh, play the video that I play at the beginning um, for you guys to just see a glimpse of what we are talking about and I'll be signing out. Let me play this video, and it's gonna be amazing. Okay, let's play this. Let's play this. Um, yeah, you guys, you see that, right? We want in Africa, as you said, where there is equality of gender, equality of opportunity, um, promise of a good, healthy life, promise of an educated society, promise of a leadership that thinks more about service than being served. We want all of that, borders to, 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 to be removed and so on. Why don't we have it? My answer is very clear. Because you have a selfish leadership. Extremely selfish. We always... <laughs> We often think of the problem of leadership as being the problem of the leaders alone. Fine. They must be defined, have integrity, have all those we want. But to succeed, they must be able to implant those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political interaction. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Equality or is it diversity? How do we convert diversity into strength rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting? Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish, we are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. We have, you know, it's ironical that you have a, a continent with the best natural resources of any others as of today. But they are being exploited for the sustenance of those who enslaved us and continue exploiting us rather than being exploited for our own emancipation. It's very important right Why? now. Why? Because you have a leadership that does not recognize the degree of present day, uh, present day enslavement, economic enslavement, and the necessity for, uh, for, for, for emancipation. It's ironical. We, we talk about development, but we don't stop in time to define what development in our kind of situation is. One of the greatest reasons of admiration for this country, for instance, is the fact that you have here a universal system of health and education delivery. Now, that is development. Rwanda is more developed than any of these Western countries in this regard, where you have assured health and education delivery. So we really must rethink where we are, why we are what we are, what we can be, and how we can. I agree, women, youth, and all those things. But internally, the fault is in us, dear Brutus, not in our stars. Thank you. Yeah, guys, that's it. And I really appreciate um, for stopping by here today and for everybody who participated in the comment section or with the opinion. I think it matters a lot. So I really appreciate you guys. 
Uh, please um, continue to love one another. Always spread peace and keep that unit going on. Remember that we are one. And remember that we are all, we have to embrace our diversity. And equality is very important because God, that's how God sees us. And that's how we should see each other and ourselves. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>